this one. Whoa! That's a real... I really like that keyboard. That is an unusual experience on a laptop. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you right now. This guy's hop is so, it's the tiniest hop. We got a bunch of goodies here from Gigabyte. Now, if you heard of them before in the past, you may associate the Gigabyte brand with motherboards and graphics cards. In fact, I have one here just to remind you how long they've been doing it. This is the Z490 Aorus Ultra. And I mean, how pretty are these things? I haven't built a PC in a while, but my goodness, the story of my childhood and tech enthusiasm in general, I've seen many of these, although back in the day, they didn't look quite this nice. Nowadays, these things are looking more like uh, sports cars or cyber truck. Look at the thing. I mean, with the shield over and the metallics and the, and, uh, the support for the 10th gen Intel chips. Anyways, so you've probably seen these products before, but they got new stuff. They're doing laptops now and not just gaming laptops. Like you might assume they are doing gaming laptops. They're also doing workstation laptops for the creative types, the video editors and such like, uh, like us around this studio. So I've got their two kind of top tier units at the moment. And let's just take a quick peek at some of the specs. So this one is the Aero 15 OLED. That's right, that's an OLED display on a 15 inch laptop with UHD resolution. It has an RTX 2070 Super 8G, Core i7-10875H. It has 16 gigabytes of RAM, because it says HEB times two, and a 512 M.2 PCIe SSD. That's very cool, but as I mentioned, support for the 10th gen CPUs from Intel. Now this is not something you see frequently to have OLED in a laptop. Now we have OLED on the TVs and we're starting to see it a little bit more in the laptops. Okay, so here is the laptop itself. I'm just gonna put that over there for a moment. And also inside the package here, power cable. This is gonna be your power brick. Now this does have an RTX 2070, so you're gonna need a power brick to juice that up. So even though this is the one targeted at the workstation crowd, of course, with that graphics card, you're gonna be able to play games. Let's not get crazy here. You're gonna be able to take a little break and play some games here and there. That's a 230 watt. That's a 230 watt power brick. It's a beast and that's what, you know, that's what's necessary for a laptop of this nature in this uh, in this realm. Ooh, all right, so a little bit of styling here. That looks like it might light up the arrow portion there. We have some brushed looking aluminum. It's very cool to the touch and uh, and a, a bit of a, a bit of a style to the hinge portion as well. Oh, interesting. All right, that's a that's like a microfiber. That's like, that's not a, that's a tough one to throw away. I think you keep that one, this cloth here. This is for wiping down your display. And it's not like the paper one that you might get rid of after the fact. Uh, here we see GeForce RTX Studio. So GeForce recently, they started putting that badge on products that weren't necessarily targeting gamers, but had the RTX graphics inside. So. They've got that on here, Core i7 10th gen, made in Taiwan, by the way, as well. This is interesting because this one is targeted at creative types. You can see the VESA certification for display HDR True Black 400. So the display is tuned up. I think Kirk's probably a little bit jealous because he's always looking in there when he's making the thumbnails and whatnot, it's bouncing all over the place with the colors. So this is kind of nice to know that what you see is what you're gonna get. Color calibration certified, powered by X-Rite. 94 watt hour battery up to eight hours. Thunderbolt 3, which is what I'm always looking for. Very nice. 3X 4K display output. And an SD card reader, don't you miss those? It's got an SD card reader on it. Pretty typical layout, trackpad, keyboard. The whole thing feels very sturdy, metallic build. There's a 
There's a cover for the unusually placed webcam. Look at that. Because they trimmed the bezel so much along the top, they've jammed the webcam down there, but they give you a dedicated mechanical off switch to block it when you don't want to be spied on. The bezel as a whole is very slim all the way around with the exception of the bottom portion, but the sides and top, it's almost, well, it's barely there, obviously, as you can tell. Okay, looking around the device, over here we have a full-size HDMI port, mini display, you have a USB type A connector, you have your headset output, so, well, actually your headset output input. You have an ethernet jack over on the other side. This is where you connect your power, SD card slot, Thunderbolt 3, and two more USB type A ports. I'm feeling some major grill action on the bottom. Look at this, this is like a Batman kind of moment down there. You can see some of the components. You can get uh, an idea for what's inside. And then also you can see the heat pipe in here for dissipating heat. You can see the fans as well and some feet to lift it up. And I like these rear feet here. They are substantial. And you know, sometimes you get these ones that will pop off or are tiny little ones, kind of more like what you have on the front here. These on the other hand, far more robust than what you're used to seeing. And that's what the whole thing sits on. And that exhaust, by the way, you can see all the way to the back, it's gonna dissipate heat down and I suppose also to the backside. Okay, so that's the Aero 15 OLED. As I mentioned, the target market, the creative professional. This is the gaming version of it. And the name on this one is Aorus 15G. And this one features an FHD display. It also has an RTX 2070 Super 8G. It actually has the same chip inside of it, the i7-10875H. Same RAM, 16 gigabytes. M.2 SSD, 512. So the spec list is fairly similar. However, because you no longer have an OLED display and it's no longer UHD like it is on the other model, you're gonna have a higher refresh rate. You'll also see this badge on the top of the box, G2 Esports. So apparently Gigabyte teamed up in order to actually have some input put into the design of the laptop. So they're proud of the fact that this is sort of a, a for, for gamers, by gamers type of situation. 240 Hertz. So that's, that's gonna be your difference. On the gaming side, you don't mind dipping down on the resolution a little bit, which is what this one does, in order to achieve a much faster refresh at 240 hertz. So this is an equally portable laptop, very thin and light actually. Is it, it's almost identical in fact. Also inside the box, power brick, a little bit of paperwork, and, and in fact, I think the power brick might be identical. Yes, 230 watts. That's gonna be your difference, 60 hertz, 240 hertz, you're gonna to need to decide which is more of a priority for you. Like I said to you previously with the RTX card, if you're okay with gaming at 60 hertz, and it's gonna look great by the way on the OLED display, then this model is gonna be fine. But if you get into the competitive realm, you're trying to get the, you're trying, you, you get those FPS way up there, you're trying to be all very twitchy with the high DPI on the mouse and everything like that. Well then, you're gonna to wanna to go for the 240 hertz model with the lower resolution. Also, the looks are gonna be uh, quite a bit different here. This is also a metal finish. This has, is cool to the touch, which I always look for. Are we using the metal components? It's like a silver, it's a little darker than a silver. It's almost like a space gray, to be honest. Once again, a light up portion, but in this case, a little more aggressive, a little more gamer. So it's kind of a different styling around a similar chassis. Same thing goes for the vent on the back and the bottom, different shape, but the same idea. As we look around this one, the ports are gonna be the same on the left-hand side, HDMI, display out, USB type A, headset input, output, and an ethernet jack. And then over here, we're gonna still have the Thunderbolt 3, the SD card slot, your DC, and two more USB A ports. What happens when I crack this open? See, I'm curious because supposedly this is like the thinnest laptop with a mechanical keyboard. We have the same nice little microfiber polishing cloth in there. Oh, that's much different. Okay, let me crack these both right now because 
you can start to see the difference here. Track pads look similar. This, the one on the right, the gaming version, is gonna be ever so slightly thicker as well. Interestingly, you still have the X-Rite Pantone certified display indication on this one, on the gaming one. The Arrow has a glossy finish on the display, whereas the Aorus has a matte finish on the display, which is kind of an interesting choice. RTX non-studio indicator, still 10th generation Intel Core i7 CPU, still made in Taiwan, three millimeter thin bezel, Wi-Fi 6, Pantone color calibration. So, I mean, you could still, you could still use this one for content creation, obviously, and this one for gaming. It's just which one is more of a priority for you. CNC aluminum chassis, capable, once again, of 3X 4K display output, the thinnest mechanical switch. So that's gonna be the biggest difference is the keyboard. So this one aims to be lower profile and slimmer, as mentioned for that target clientele. This one, whoa, that's a real, I have felt from other manufacturers who claimed to have jammed a mechanical keyboard into a laptop and then I felt and been like, yeah, but we don't have the travel necessary to get the mechanical feel, even though maybe you have jammed the mechanical switch somewhere in there. This one, on the other hand, and by the way, this is, I am by no means a power typer and I feel that having a mechanical key switch helps me even more so than somebody who's a really confident typer. And so I've noticed in the past when I'm selecting for my favorite laptop keyboards, the greater the travel, the more significant the click, the fewer mistakes that I make. So this I could... You know what? This is just a first impression, but... I really like that keyboard. This is a first impression, but that is an unusual experience on a laptop. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you right now. That is not, I have tried many laptops, ladies and gentlemen, and that is a very nice laptop typing experience. Also on this unit, you have the same mechanical switch for covering up the front facing camera, which once again, they jammed down here. It's gonna be a little bit of an up the nose situation, but I think for many people, it's a, it's a trade-off you're willing to make in order to really shrink the bezel along the top of the display on both units. I kind of like how this one contrasts the black trackpad and keyboard against this space gray type of coloring, but I also like the black too. Those are your differences. I think performance should be fairly similar on the both of them, but you can tell me right now, just from a styling perspective, which one would be more interesting to you, the Aero 15 OLED or the Aorus 15G? And obviously this has a lot to do with what you're gonna use it for, but just from a styling perspective, which is more interesting to you at the moment? Anyway, let me just go ahead and hit the power switches here. That is RGB, it does have RGB. So if you want it to be just white backlit, you can. Otherwise, RGB to match the gaming model, the Aorus 15G. Oh man, I don't know what's gonna happen to me. Now that I've used this keyboard on a laptop, I'm gonna have to, I might have to switch my laptop. I, uh, this is having a thud. This is feeling a thud to me, and it's reminding me of every other laptop that I use, but this one with the clickety clack, my goodness. All right, so I have both of these booted up right now. I'm a two laptop man. I got two laptops. I got two laptops. Uh, because this one on the left is the, the creative mode and this one on the right is the game mode, I'm gonna, uh, uh, I'm gonna open up a video editing timeline first on the Aero model. Then I'm gonna have some fun with the gaming model, the Aorus 15G. So first up, slap this HDMI so you can see what I see. So we have a test project here. It is a 4K test project. Oh, and you even got the Aero footage in there? Oh baby, look at this. So we, what do we do? Do we scrub? Of course we scrub. Wow, that's a cool, what is that, like a wallpaper? OLED test video. We have the performance for 30 frames per second, 
4K. Presumably we can do, we could probably do even more, but the idea here with the RTX chip inside, even though this thing is pretty slim and trim, it's an actual workstation. You can do real work on it. I just want to full screen this real quick. Now you can see what I'm saying with the OLED as well. As this plays back on a timeline, not dropping any frames, we have the colors, we have the dark segments, the contrast, it's all happening right here. And it's gonna to be tough for this other laptop over here to compete when it comes to the visual experience from that standpoint. But where it will obliterate this display is with that refresh. It's available either 144 or 240. The one that I have, I believe is 240. So this one caps out at 60, 60 Hertz refresh because you have the UHD and the OLED, but that image obviously looks incredible. All right, now moving over to the next one, of course we have to do a little bit of gameplay and Kirk has assured me that we have the hottest title in the world installed on this unit. And so now we're gonna test some gaming. Here it is, Fall Guys. My very first experience with Fall Guys. The whole world is playing Fall Guys. You will see inside of the graphics, a 1920 by 1080, 240 Hertz. Oh. Oh boy. I'm still in though. I can get smacked. It's all right. Jeez. Oh my God. Aggressive. <laughs> wow. This is why people love this game. I'm in last place. I'm getting killed here. How do I get eliminated? This is what, this is what everybody, this is the thing, Kirk? This is what it is? This guy's hop is so, it's the tiniest hop. Oh, I'm back to this round again. That could have been worse. You actually can use this thing to get pushed up. How did I just not even jump at all? How did I... Stop it! Come on! This game is pain. That's what it is. So the game is just pain. Oh, what happened? What happened there? Can I do one more? Can I do one more? Let me do one more. This map different? What? That's a qualification? <laughs> Can you believe what I'm proud of here? Am I into round three now? No! That's it? That's the end of me? You know what? What can I say? It's the hottest game in the world right now. And yes, of course, this RTX 2070 can play it with the maximum settings. You may want to throw some other titles on here. You may want to do a little flight simulator. You can do that too if you want. Uh, what can I say? My favorite thing, the standout feature of this laptop for me is going to remain the keyboard, which se might seem strange to you, but I'm always paying attention to these keyboards. I like the styling, obviously the spec sheet. And it's actually pretty thin considering the fact that they slammed a GPU and a mechanical keyboard with mechanical key switches in there. Another thing to note, the fans just kicked on, but they're really not, it's really not an overwhelming type of sound from the fan. It's a very subtle fan noise. There you have it. It is two brand new, a fresh laptops. You have your selection and I'm curious to know from you guys, which one you would take. You let me know down in the comments. We have the game oriented, Aorus 15G from Gigabyte. And we have the Aero OLED model, which is gonna give you an OLED display, higher resolution at 4K, but you're gonna give up a little bit on the refresh rate. Otherwise, specifications are pretty similar. At least you can spec them out in a similar fashion. Both powered by 10th gen Intel CPUs and RTX graphics from Nvidia. So like I said, left or right, let me know what you would select in the comments below.